Good evening. I'm Frank Matthew. Welcome to Channel 7 special Sherlock Holmes Week. For over a hundred years, the name Sherlock Holmes has conjured up indelible images of Victorian London fog, misty moors, the sound of the handsome cab clanking through narrow cobblestone streets. And as the plot thickened, who can forget Holmes saying, the game is afoot. It's hard to believe, but the first Holmes movie was made in 1903. That's when Sir Arthur Conan Doyle was still writing the Holmes stories. That first silent film, a dismal failure, and so were four other movies that followed shortly after. But then, in 1908, a Danish film company made 12 Holmes films. They were hits. From 1908 until 1939, 62 more Sherlock Holmes movies were produced worldwide and Holmes had indeed become the world's most popular detective. Over those years, of course, many different actors played Holmes, but only one truly sticks in our mind, Basil Rathbone, the man who came closest to creating the definitive Holmes. The shadowy, angular face, the sharp and incisive voice, the cool and calm reasoner, he was Sherlock Holmes. Basil Rathbone was born in South Africa in 1892. His father sent him to England to be educated, and at 18, he went to work as an insurance agent. But he was a better actor than salesman. And for about 10 years, he appeared in many movies in supporting roles. Then in 1939, it happened. He was cast as the famous Baker Street detective, a casting that has left its mark on film history. Tonight's movie, The Hound of the Baskervilles, is the first to star Basil Rathbone, and it is also the first to team him with Nigel Bruce as his loyal assistant, Dr. Watson. The film was a smash hit and one of the most successful of 1939. It is a bloody good show. Not good and bloody like today's movies. It is just bloody good. So sit back and let the mystery unfold. As Holmes would say, the game is afoot. Good evening. I'm Frank Manthe. Welcome to Channel 7 special Sherlock Holmes Week. The first Sherlock Holmes movie with Basil Rathbone as Sherlock Holmes and Nigel Bruce as Dr. Watson was made in 1939 and it was a smash hit. Fox Studio executives were so impressed by the film's popularity and proceeds that they immediately went into production on tonight's film the Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. The movie pits Holmes in a high-pitched battle of wits with his arch-enemy, Professor Moriarty. The plot, with its complex twists and turns, deals with the professor's attempt to commit the crime of the century, the theft of the crown jewels. Moriarty attempts to blind Holmes to his plan by providing the curious mind of the world's greatest detective with a bizarre puzzle a test for Holmes' intelligence. While Holmes is trying to solve the brain teaser, Moriarty hopes to steal the treasure. Holmes does fall for Moriarty's ploy, but not in the way Moriarty had in mind. The professor is played by George Zuko, a British actor who made a career of playing villains in the 30s and 40s. Zuko's Moriarty relishes evil for evil's sake and never seems to end his enjoyment of tormenting Holmes. The film does maintain the high standard set by Hound of the Baskervilles, and some say it's actually the better of the two. It was directed by Alfred Worker, and you'll notice he keeps the action moving. All of the shooting took place at Fox's extensive London studios, and Worker gives the film an authentic period atmosphere. Sadly, this was the last film in which Rathbone was to play the detective in the Victorian period style. He was never again to wear the deerstalker hat and stride down fog-shrouded London streets. Sit back and let the adventures of Sherlock Holmes unfold. You can almost hear him say it, can't you? The game is afoot. Good evening, I'm Frank Matthey. Welcome to Channel 7 special Sherlock Holmes Week. The Hound of the Baskervilles and The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes, they were two quality films that brought in fans and money. It was natural to think that a series would follow, but 1939 was no ordinary time. The Second World War had just begun, 
and Fox Studios thought that the high production values of the Sherlock Holmes movies would be too expensive to continue. So, Basil Rathbone and Nigel Bruce were dropped from the studio. But Holmes, as Professor Moriarty discovered, was a hard character to eliminate. And in 1942, Universal Pictures purchased the rights to the Holmes stories from the Arthur Conan Doyle estate. But Universal presented the detective as a contemporary figure, writing him into World War II plots. The updating, of course, eliminated the high cost of period sets and costumes that had been so lavish in the early movies. The handsome cab was replaced with the automobile, but the famous pipe and the violin did make the transition from Victorian London to World War II. Unfortunately, the deerstalker hat was left in jolly old England. Tonight's movie, Sherlock Holmes Faces Death, was the fourth of the World War II movies, and it doesn't deal with the war itself as much as the previous three. This is more mystery, more of the supernatural, secret passages, howling winds, and killer ghosts. The plot even manages to pull in a thread of Conan Doyle's original story, The Musgrave Ritual. Now, as a note, the little village used in tonight's movie was originally constructed on the Universal lot for the Frankenstein movies of the 1930s. This movie was the last time the village was used. Shortly after filming, it was destroyed. Now, near the end of the movie, there's something you shouldn't miss. Holmes and Watson are driving through the countryside, and Holmes gives one of those wonderful little World War II patriotic speeches. You can see Basil Rathbone meant every word of it. Now, you're facing drooping eyelids right now, but don't give up. After all, Sherlock Holmes faces death. Good evening. I'm Frank Matthey. Welcome to Channel 7 special Sherlock Holmes Week. Tonight's mystery, Sherlock Holmes and the Pearl of Death, was directed by Roy William Neal. He was brought in to direct the Holmes movies when Universal Studios bought the rights to the stories from the Conan Doyle estate in 1942. He stayed with the series through the last film in 1946. The Pearl of Death was released in 1944. In The Pearl, Holmes and Watson encounter one of their more memorable bad guys, the Creeper. The Creeper was played by Rondo Hatton, a grotesque-looking actor who suffered from a horrible disease that distorted his facial features. Director Neal made the most of Hatton by filming him with deep shadows. At the time, Hatton was known as the only actor to play monsters without makeup. Hatton then went on to play the Creeper again in many non-Holmes movies and made the transition to TV in the early 50s. The Pearl of Death is noteworthy because this was the first Holmes movie where Universal practically eliminated the names of Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson from the advertising. The names of Basil Rathbone and Nigel Bruce had become so synonymous with the Holmes and Watson characters that as far as Universal was concerned, one name was as good as the other. So, sit back and let the mystery of Sherlock Holmes and the Pearl of Death unfold. As Holmes would say, the game is afoot. Good evening. I'm Frank Matthey. Welcome to Channel 7 special Sherlock Holmes Week. After finishing The Pearl of Death in 1944, Basil Rathbone and Nigel Bruce made three more Holmes films, all released in 1945. Tonight's mystery, Sherlock Holmes in the House of Fear, is considered by critics to be by far the best of the lot. House of Fear was inspired by Arthur Conan Doyle's story, The Five Orange Pips, and it is thought by many to be the neatest and most effective of the Universal Studios Holmes movies. Rathbone and Bruce went on to make two more films for Universal in 1946, but that was the end. Basil Rathbone made his final movie as the great detective in the film, Dressed to Kill, but he said, that's it, that was enough. He did not renew his contract, and when asked why, Rathbone said, I played Holmes for seven years and nobody thought I could do anything else. When I would come onto the set, it was never, hello Rathbone, it was always, hello Holmes. 
And so the greatest Sherlock Holmes series came to an end. Rathbone went on to do theater and radio. In 1953, he played the detective for the last time on Broadway in the play Sherlock Holmes. Unfortunately, it closed after only three performances. On July 21st, 1967, Basil Rathbone, after having been given a physical just the day before, died of a heart attack. The actor who will be forever Sherlock Holmes in the hearts and minds of millions of moviegoers had made his last bow. And now, Sherlock Holmes and the House of Fear. As Sherlock would say, the game is afoot. <laughs>